As the world stirred awake to the twentieth century's promises, a profound vision was sculpting history's new chapter. This vision, imbued with the relentless spirit of Marcus Garvey, aspired to elevate black people to sovereign heights, far from the shadows of subjugation. Garvey, a fiery herald, preached pan-Africanism with a zealous heart, awakening an era of black pride and independence. His voice, an undying echo, rallied a fractured people, whispering of a future replete with their own glory and autonomy, beckoning a dawn of unprecedented black empowerment. It was in the year of 1914 that Garvey consecrated his clarion call into existence, birthing the Universal Negro Improvement Association, the UNIA. More than an institution, it was a beacon of hope for African Americans, heralding a movement of mass exodus and repatriation to Africa. Garvey's vision sought to kindle a fire for sovereignty's return, to chart a course toward freedom's boundless ocean, for in unity, Garvey believed, lay their collective redemption. By the early 1920s, Garvey's resounding message found sanctuary in millions of hearts setting ablaze a worldwide testament to self-determination and economic emancipation. The Pan-African leader had ascended as a geopolitical colossus, the father of an awakening that washed over continents like a mighty wave, promising to redefine the age, delivering unto black people a legacy crafted by their own hands. Yet not all gazed upon this rising tide with adoration. From within the austere halls of American power, one man examined Garvey through lenses fogged with apprehension. He was J. Edgar Hoover, headstrong director of the Bureau of Investigation, a sentinel against whom Garvey's nascent sway seemed a troubling tide, threatening to erode old orders. And so it was. Under Hoover's wary surveillance, the seeds of discord were sown. Clad in the armor of suspicion and resolve, Hoover chose his instrument, James Wormley Jones, the Bureau's first black agent, charged with an insidious mission, infiltrate the heart of Garvey's empire. Undercover, Jones wove himself into the Unia's tapestry, collecting threads of intelligence to unravel an upcoming campaign designed with precision to topple Garvey's towering dream. Amidst these brewing storms sailed the vessel of Garvey's ambition, the Black Star Line, Embodied in steel and steam was more than just ships but icons of economic autonomy and returning home. Despite turbulent finances and organizational woes, these ships stood as paragons sailing bravely onto liberation's horizon. The African diaspora clung to this promise. A dawn only just perceived through hopeful eyes fixed upon distant shores. As the morning sun heralded the dawn, a trial loomed, dark and ominous as a gathering storm, drawing crowds rustling with nervous anticipation. Marcus Garvey stood before the court, the embodiment of resistance now facing the gavel of a wary judicial system. With the grandeur of the Black Star Line's promise weighed against accusations of mail fraud, a titan was on trial. The government, vigilant and poised for retribution, painted Garvey as a criminal mastermind. But beneath the charges lay an unspoken truth. Garvey's real transgression was igniting a firestorm of black empowerment. This was less a trial for fraud than a trial for freedom. The legal shackles prepared to silence a burgeoning roar for liberty. Within the courtroom's walls the scales of justice teetered precariously. This was not a mere judiciary proceeding, but a battle waged with pens and paper swords. Garvey's followers thronged the streets, conscientiously objecting to a trial they deemed a façade. Yet, their cries were muffled by stone walls and stern faces. The jury's verdict cascaded through the room, a guillotine slicing sharply through ambition. Garvey received a sentence of five years, chains of imprisonment awaiting to fetter the spirit, to silence the impassioned pleas, for unity and return. Power had spoken, 
Its gavel was mightier than the hope woven into the lining of Garvey's dreams. The gray monotony of Atlanta. Federal penitentiary's walls confined Garvey, yet could not contain his spirit. Nourished by conviction, his visions continued to thrive beyond iron bars. The crusader for freedom became an inmate. But even within this new realm of steel and stone, Garvey waged his struggle for sovereignty. He penned powerful words that fluttered like doves over prison fences, messages that resonated with those still free to dream. His presence flickered through his prose and speeches, a beckoning light in the smothering dark, assuring that even amidst chains, hope could be unshackled. Behind tall fences, through whispered rumors and doubt-tinged air, Unia began to wobbly like a giant on unsteady legs. The warm glow of solidarity, cooled without Garvey's steadfast guidance, rival factions arose, splintering on unified resolve. Garvey's directives from prison walls collided with the harsh reality of an organization grappling with its helm adrift, a movement stranded at sea amidst surging waves of discord. Unity tarnished by individual ambition, the dream once vibrant with possibility, now gasped for air, starved by distance and dissent. With the turning pages of calendars marked by protest and political intrigue, Garvey's chain-bound narrative took an unexpected turn toward freedom. A sentence commuted through victory was tinged with irony. Exile replaced incarceration. The seafaring pioneer deported to Jamaica's familiar shores. Chains fell away only for the vast ocean to impose its own daunting exile. Marcus Garvey stood freed yet bounded anew. His American dream dissolved in salt water, his voice muted by miles of untraversable sea. The Black Star's captain was anchorless, cast away from the very people whose hopes he carried. The gloss of anticipation dimmed as Marcus Garvey's vigor ebbed amidst shifting sands of time and geography. Jamaican sunsets whispered tales of distant struggles, while his envelopment in politics seemed an echo among echoes, Unaya threats loosened further as voices diverged and dispelled, with every mile away from American soil, a thread parted from the martyr's cloth. Endeavors to maintain influence were diligent, but dwindled by distance. Garvey's movements rippled with diminished force, a tempest now hushed to a gentle swell. In the fading light of a gentle English evening, Marcus Garvey contemplated the undulating landscape of change. Far removed from the fervent surge that once propelled thousands, Garvey's voice now carried across sparser gatherings in London. The city's persistent drizzle whispered of a world that had once basked under the heat of his ambition. The twilight of his leadership descended not from waning conviction, but from the diminishing proximity to his cherished diaspora. As if against a relentless tide, Marcus Garvey grappled with the siege laid by circumstance, his once formidable empire now besieged by financial constraints, his own resilience weathered by trials and separations. London's biting winds bore little resemblance to the warm shores he had hoped to grace, in this final act, as physical health and resources ebbed, Garvey valiantly continued writing, speaking, persisting against the forces intent on erasing his influence. Efforts to discredit and dismantle Marcus Garvey's legacy persisted beyond the confines of penitentiary walls. In the courtroom of public opinion, controversy often masked martyrdom, turning the key in the lock of his historical standing. Yet as detractors laid siege to his character, History's lens shifted, casting J. Edgar Hoover's relentless pursuit in sinister hues. Garvey had crafted an identity in defiance of subjugation, a luminance now seen in stark contrast to the shadows that had chased him. Marcus Garvey's philosophies refused to be stilled by silence or scorn. The sapling ideas he planted took root in the fertile ground of minds hungry for equality. His words woven into the collective consciousness, sprouting anew amidst the righteous clamor for civil rights. Where feet marched upon weary roads, each step resonated with Garvey-inspired defiance. His legacy now a chant on lips that would not. 
and could not be oppressed. In death as in life, Marcus Garvey's name summon at seas of discourse, tittle waves of debate uh, each crashing against the other. Yet with each ebby and flow emerges the steadfast acknowledgment. He lit a torch in an era thick with darkness, a fire-starter for black nationalism and self-determination. The harshest critics could not quell nor tame the firebrand spirit he enkindled. The sparks he scattered shaped destinies far beyond his mortal reach. Marcus Garvey's tale traverses time, woven into the very fabric that cloaks our present struggles with truth, justice, and identity. Profoundly embedded within Rastafarianism, hip-hop beats, slam poetry stanzas, his tenacity reborn with every resonant note and word, spoken against injustice. The phoenix, once jailed for pride, has risen evermore as eternal illumination, an everlasting flame within history's unyielding hall. If you enjoyed this video and gained any value from it, please like this video, as it really helps spread awareness of this great story. It really helps the channel as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great stories of amazing people and majestic lands. Thanks for watching.